such a pretty sight. Hey, Ms. Wall here at Six Feet Away. We've got Mr. Powell, AP Environmental Science, and here we are at Ojo de Agua Creek. Yeah, and we really wish we were all here together, but we are going to do the best we can to uh, bring this creek experience to you. Uh, we've got important work to do. Our, our mission today is to, to assess the health of uh, this creek and this riparian ecosystem. And so that's a power vocabulary word for you that you want to tuck away riparian. And what that refers to is the whole kind of like green ecosystem around a creek. And I'm sure you've seen it uh, somewhere along the way. You've just noticed that things tend to be greener around the creek because there's more water. So riparian. Uh, and so if you saw the flip lecture on, on how to do this, we're, we're going to do exactly that. We're taking a two pronged approach. We're going to be looking at the abiotic data, the non living stuff, which is in, in our case, the water quality data. And then we're also going to uh, be looking for creatures inside the creek. And so, uh, and what you might not know is that a lot of insects, uh, insects that you know, start their lives in the creek underwater. Um, and basically they're like frogs that start off as a tadpole and they turn into an adult frog. These uh, insects start off as uh, larvae in the creek, fully submerged, like for example, a dragonfly nymph, and then they metamorphosize into a dragonfly and fly away. And so they're really good for being indicator species because they can't leave the water. And so other insects that are like, I guess, terrestrial, if things get rough and the, there's pollution, they can just fly away. Uh, but for the, the aquatic ones, they're, they're either they're there or they're not there. So that's what we're going to be looking at. So uh, we're going to get into it. And so uh, more to follow here in a minute. Oh, what's that? Check this out. Check what oh, that's out? That's really cool. You guys see that in the screen there? That green stuff that's on the, the tree branch? Check it out, Miss Wolf. If you look around your neighborhood, you will find sticks like this, and sometimes it's growing on rocks. You know what that stuff's called? What is it called? It's called lichen. Here's some more, here's another sample there. Uh, and it's worth pointing out because it's really uh, a pretty cool thing in nature. It's a symbiotic relationship, a mutualist, uh, mutualism, an example of mutualism, where you've got one organism helping the other organism and back and forth. So basically they liken each other. Exactly, exactly. Here's the two, and then in this case, it's two kingdoms. So you got kingdom, uh, you got algae, which is from kingdom uh, protista. There's photosynthetic, and you've got uh, fungi from kingdom fungi, uh, and that's not photosynthetic. And so basically, the algae uh, or the fungi kind of has it grabs onto the substrate, and then it, or it grabs on. It can grow on rocks. It can grow on trees. And then the algae can kind of sink its, uh, I guess, its roots, for lack of a better word, into the fungi. And what happens is the fungi gives the algae a place to live, and the algae does photosynthesis and gives the fungi sugar. And so it's a partnership, and it's called lichen. And it's important for AP environmental science purposes because it's a great example of a pioneer species. And so after there's like a big disturbance, like a, like a, especially like a glacier, or a, a something like that, where the, it's basically the, the soil is gone. It's, the ecosystem is down to bedrock. Uh, lichen will be the first species on the scene a lot. That's one to remember. It reminds me of the story. Uh, when I was in college, I, I knew this guy. Uh, he, he, he liked to party a lot. I don't know if you guys will meet anybody like this in college, but he, uh, he was really kind of out of control. He was a slob. Uh, unorganized, but he had a place to live. Uh, but his his refrigerator was always empty. He couldn't really take care of himself. Uh, but he he was a pretty uh, he was a good guy to hang around with, and we called him Fun Guy. One day, Fun Guy uh, met this other person that uh, that was his name was Al G. And Al G. Uh, was more together and went to class and, and, and was grocery shopping and filled up the refrigerator and so fun guy had food to uh, to eat and and but it was good because algae had a place to live so algae and fun guy they worked it out and together they were liking it they were <laughs> liking it and so that's another one to remember pioneer species lichen um, file that away 
Oh, hello there. Uh, you caught it. You caught us. We're just about to get started uh, looking for biotic indicators. And so here's how we're going to do it. Uh, Miss Wool has got the what we call a kick net right here. And it's just a screen that I got at Home Depot and we stapled it into some boards. It's one meter wide, about. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take a one meter square area right in front of it. And uh, like I mentioned before, a lot of insects start their lives in the water and they're clinging to rocks. And the reason it's called a kick net is what I'm going to do is start kicking all kinds of stuff and I'm just stirring up the water. And a lot of the, uh, the critters are attached to the rock. And so we just got to, you got to get the net down a little bit further. We just got to turn that stuff over and stir up the, the, uh, the substrate. All that stuff drains into the, uh, the net. And this is how we catch the critters. And so after a little while, what we're going to do, and you can pull that out, we're going to set it inside this little container here. And I'm going to take a cup of water and backsplash it to get the stuff off the net to get everything that was caught in there. And then we'll take a look and see what we got. Um, oh yeah. I, I, see a, I see a couple swimmers in there. And so what, uh, no, and what we're gonna do there's one right there. Uh, I see a dead, a dead one too. What we're gonna do is we're gonna uh, basically fish these guys out uh, with a spoon and we're gonna get them up uh, in a space where we can take a closer look at them. But what we're gonna actually do is we're gonna, this was like one sample pole and we got a few swimmers in here. Uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna do it at several different parts of the creek. Uh, and then that'll give us a better idea of what's going on here. And so what I always tell students when we're here is that we, we, one of our tasks is we've really got to turn up the curiosity dial. So it's kind of like yeah. if you go on a safari, um, if you were just kind of like the average person, you'd see a lot of giraffes and you'd be out taking pictures of giraffes all day long. And, oh, there's another giraffe. Then you go and you'd upload it to your social media. But if you really want to see like the good stuff, you got to look. And so if you want to find the cheetah, you gotta, you gotta stick with it and you gotta look in the right places uh, and be persistent. And so we're trying to find the cheetah down here and we're not gonna find the cheetah on the first look. So we gotta try it in a few different places on the creek um, and then we'll get an idea of what's here. Sounds good. All right, that's what we're up to right now. Stay tuned. There's another of the dandruff guys. I lost it. It's happening. We're catching them. We were in search of the elusive crane fly nymph and we came coming up empty. You'll just have to trust us. It's disgusting and it's beautiful at the same time. Um, and then it turns into a fly and flies away. So uh, can you tell us what you're doing there, Miss Wool? I am measuring the dissolved oxygen in parts per million using this probe. And I'm just waiting for it to level out. And there she goes, uh, recording nitrates, and our uh, able-bodied assistant is taking the data. Hello! What are you doing there, Miss Wool? I am videotaping the um, invertebrates that we found in the creek. 
we've organized them by type and we're just getting some close-ups. Uh -huh. And we, we just got done naming them all and so we can keep track of who's who. <laughs> up there. Can you bring it in a little closer? That is awesome. Where did the feather go? Oh, the feather broke so I replaced it with double masts. Okay. It looks good. I like the aesthetics, but let's see if that thing floats. Love the sails. <laughs> oh, it ran aground. Oh! <gasps> This is my boat. Uh, and it's actually not a boat, it's a raft. <laughs> um, I don't know if it's gonna float though. Let's, let's test it out. Hey, let, let, let's give me a close up of the raft. Oh, look at that. I like how you got the support built in there. All right, let's see if this thing's seaworthy. Get a good feeling. Oh, look at that, it floats. Are you going backwards? You can't hold much cargo because last time it had cargo. Cannonball! Is that a raven? There's two of them. She was treated so badly. 